It is almost impossible to debate. No other animal that has ever lived on this planet has the same fearsome, iconic, and near legendary status as Tyrannosaurus rex, the flagship and poster child of all dinosaurs. There are a number of reasons as to why this is. Take into account the awesome form and figure of this dinosaur, with its giant, powerful skull, towering legs, and long, tapering tail. It was one of the largest predators of the Cretaceous, and large animals tend to be looked upon with respect and wonder regardless. Moreover, it is one of the most well-represented dinosaurs in the fossil record. Almost the entire Tyrannosaurus rex skeleton is known to science, and in turn they remain a staple of must-see museum exhibits across the world. Like all dinosaurs, however, there was much more to this superstar than the impact it has left behind. Something that is easy to forget, given the overload of Tyrannosaurus-related exaggerations in popular culture, presumably off the back of this dinosaur's draconic appearance, is that this was not a beast of folklore and legend. It really existed. This was a living, breathing animal, that prowled the plains and forests of Cretaceous Montana 66 million years ago. Just like the famous dinosaurs we have explored on this channel before, Tyrannosaurus rex had its own story to tell, its own unique lifestyle, evolutionary tale, and more. It is this story that we aim to unravel in today's video in order to paint a realistic image of this universally known dinosaur. Sit back and relax as we take you on a tour through prehistory to explore the life and times of Tyrannosaurus rex, the Tyrant Lizard King. Tyrannosaurus rex is one of a possible three different species of Tyrannosaurus, a genus of dinosaur that sits within the Tyrannosauridae family. The animal itself needs very little introduction. This was a giant predatory theropod, the apex predator of its ecosystem. It lived between 68 and 66 million years ago, in what has become known as the Maastrichtian stage of the Late Cretaceous period, the very final act of the Mesozoic, and thus the dinosaurs themselves. Tyrannosaurus was in fact one of the largest terrestrial predators ever to walk the Earth, much larger than any land-based hunter living on Earth today. Amongst the largest of Tyrannosaurus rex skeletons, is an individual nicknamed Sue, currently on display at the Chicago Field Museum of Natural History. The dinosaur measures almost 12 and a half meters long, massive even among large theropod standards. Sue is thought to have been above average in terms of typical Tyrannosaurus rex length, but certain specimens have been unearthed that are reported to measure over 13 meters long. Modern estimates for the weight of these huge animals vary between five and a half metric tons to eight metric tons, potentially heavier than a fully grown male African bush elephant, the heaviest land animal alive today. Tyrannosaurus rex skulls are almost as recognizable as the dinosaur in its entirety. Measuring up to a meter and a half long, the skull became more narrow and tapering as it reached the snout, with eye openings that permitted its owner binocular vision. Openings in the skull known as fenestra reduce the overall weight of the skull, allowing the dinosaur to keep it held up with ease as it walked across the plains. Some of the bones within the skull were fused together, possessing tiny air spaces within them to strengthen the jaws. This meant that Tyrannosaurus rex was capable of employing a bite force stronger than any other dinosaur known to science, 
as much as 5,800 kilograms of force from one individual tooth at the back of the mouth. Tyrannosaurus rex's teeth were shaped almost like backwards curved knives, up to 30 and a half centimeters in length at their largest. Their teeth were intentionally blade-like, perfect for ripping through the flesh of an animal carcass. Reinforced with ridges to ensure they could not be easily broken when cutting through skin and bone, the teeth were rather compactly packed together in the animal's mouth, allowing for a great deal of damage to be dealt with one single bite. The teeth on the upper jaw were typically larger than those in the lower jaw, and both jaws contained many small holes within the bone. Scientists are still in debate as to the purpose of these holes. Some argue that they could have been attachment points for lips, or perhaps even the makings of a sensory system that could detect vibrations in the predator's surrounding area. The skull of Tyrannosaurus rex was followed by 10 neck vertebrae, 13 back vertebrae, and 5 sacral vertebrae bones attached to the pelvis and fused to one another. It is thought that the tail of this dinosaur may have contained at least 40 individual bones, but the exact number is not known. The tail was extremely long, as such a length would assist the dinosaur in counteracting the weight of its huge skull and head, preventing it from toppling over forward during hunts. The tail was connected to the rear ends of the legs with huge locomotor muscles, which would have allowed the dinosaur to take immensely powerful strides when running at full speed. The hind limbs of Tyrannosaurus rex were some of the longest of any theropod dinosaur in comparison to the size of its body, which would have permitted a massive stride too. This is ironic when contrasted with the infamously comical size of Tyrannosaurus rex's forelimbs, tiny yet robust arms with only two clawed fingers as well as a near invisible vestigial third digit tucked away behind the claws. As the entire arm was not discovered when the dinosaur first became known to science, it was initially thought that Tyrannosaurus's arm was as long as other theropods, such as the Jurassic apex predator Allosaurus, who possessed much longer forelimbs. As such, Tyrannosaurus was often depicted in those early years with lengthy arms. This is now, as everyone is well aware, not the case. A lot of debate has raged on over the years as to the exact function of these arms, with theories ranging from the idea that they were useless and vestigial, to considering that they may have assisted the dinosaur in holding down prey as it was killed with a strike from the jaws. As a result of the great degree of representation of Tyrannosaurus rex in the fossil record, combined with the public interest in this amazing animal, much work has gone into understanding how this dinosaur lived and hunted on a day-to-day -day basis. These studies have ranged from examining the dinosaur's capability to thermoregulate, to taking a look at its social behavior, and even sensory abilities. Let's take a look at the former first, the ability to thermoregulate. A very recent study in 2022, conducted by Yasmina Vyman and colleagues, saw the paleontologists examining Tyrannosaurus rex's oxidative phosphorylation, the process where cells use enzymes to provide oxygen to nutrients. The results they obtained correlated with the metabolic rates of the dinosaur, allowing them to deduce that Tyrannosaurus had an endothermic metabolism, similar to that of modern birds and mammals. It was warm-blooded. This may not mean that the dinosaur was purely endothermic, however. It may have exhibited a process known as gigantothermy, 
in which particularly large animals are able to maintain a high, constant body temperature. Further studies may reveal the concrete truth yet. It has been suggested in the past that Tyrannosaurus rex may have been a pack hunter. Philip J. Curry, a Canadian paleontologist, first suggested this based on evidence that closely related Tyrannosaurs were gregarious, gathering together to travel or hunt. Three Tyrannosaurus rex skeletons have since been found huddled in close proximity to one another in South Dakota, a possible link to back up this idea. Given the fact that Tyrannosaurus shared its environment with many large, dangerous herbivores, this may have been a wise strategy to ensure that fewer hunts ended in broken bones or even death amongst a potential pack. Further evidence for this theory can be seen in the presence of water thought to be the footprints of Tyrannosaurus rex, three individuals to be precise, traveling in the same direction in a segment of rock in what is today the Wapiti Formation in British Columbia, Canada. Despite the strong evidence for the pack hunting behavior in these giant carnivores, we know that not all interactions between Tyrannosaurus individuals were peaceful. Paleontologist Joseph Peterson and his team have undergone studies into a Tyrannosaurus rex skull belonging to an individual nicknamed Jane. Her skull, which indicates that she was still young at her time of death, showed evidence of bite marks that are thought to have been caused by another Tyrannosaurus rex of the same age. The team found that the bite marks in the skull ended in a traumatic injury that would have taken a long time to heal. Perhaps this was a fight over resources or territory as the dinosaurs approached subadult ages. As for the dinosaurs' sensory capabilities, Paleontologist Lawrence Whitmer from Ohio University first discovered that Tyrannosaurus rex was able to demonstrate excellent eye coordination, able to quickly orient its eyes and head to track down a potential prey item in its vision range. In fact, the binocular vision boasted by this dinosaur permitted a vision range of 55 degrees, more than that seen in most modern-day birds of prey who rely almost entirely on eyesight to hunt. It is thought that Tyrannosaurus was able to see distinct objects separate from the horizon as far as six kilometers away from where it was standing. We can only discern objects as far away as a kilometer and a half. It had an excellent perception of low frequency sounds which would have allowed hunts to be planned and commenced from a faraway distance, and its sense of smell to go with this was immaculate. This sense of smell was bolstered by large olfactory bulbs and nerves, allowing the dinosaur to catch wind of a carcass's scent from very far away. When it came to feeding, the general consensus is that Tyrannosaurus was either an apex predator or a scavenger of pre-killed carcasses. The former seems most likely given the animal's size and jaw strength, meaning that for an animal of its size, it would have been hunting truly formidable prey items. Its favorite foods were likely hadrosaurs, but when they were unavailable, it would not have been afraid to pursue a ceratopsian, ankylosaur, or possibly even a sauropod. Some paleontologists do argue that Tyrannosaurus was purely a scavenger, however. Jack Horner is one of the leading voices for this theory, who over the years has put together a series of points which counteract the apex predator hypothesis. He argued that Tyrannosaurus's arms were useless in the hunting process, their olfactory systems were too highly developed to belong to a hunter and not a scavenger, and the dinosaur may not have been fast enough to catch fast-moving prey such as hadrosaurs. 
This being said, evidence of aggressive interactions between Tyrannosaurus and herbivorous Ornithischian dinosaurs is widespread. From bite marks on Triceratops horns to Edmontosaurus tailbones. Of course, there is always the possibility that the dinosaur may have employed both strategies, hunting and scavenging, to survive on the plains of Hell Creek. There is even evidence to suggest that Tyrannosaurus may have been cannibalistic, preying on members of its own species, based on deep bite marks on Tyrannosaurus carcass finds that appear to have been made by another Tyrannosaurus. The first remains of Tyrannosaurus rex, the dinosaur that would go on to start a cultural revolution, were first discovered by Barnum Brown, the assistant curator of the American Museum of Natural History in 1900. This consisted of a partial skeleton made up of 34 individual bones in eastern Wyoming. Another was found in 1902 which added to the detail obtained from the first find. Brown took pride in the fact that he had discovered a dinosaur that had not yet been described by Othniel Charles Marsh, a prominent fossil hunter and paleontologist of the time, stating that he had never seen anything like it from the Cretaceous period. Bringing his finds to the museum, they were eventually studied by Henry Fairfield Osborne, the president of the American Museum of Natural History, who would eventually go on to assign a name to the bones, Tyrannosaurus Rex, translating to the Tyrant Lizard King in English from Greek and Latin. The dinosaur was given this name as a result of its immense size and theorized place in the ecosystem. At this point, once the dinosaur had been described and identified, studies on the species began to fade away to the side. This was until the 1960s, however, when a massive 42 Tyrannosaurus rex skeletons were unearthed from the western rock formations of Cretaceous North America. Studies yet again exploded subsequently in the 1990s, when twice as many Tyrannosaurus finds than all those previously discovered became known to science. The most complete Tyrannosaurus skeleton to date is an individual nicknamed Sue, named after its discoverer, Sue Hendrickson. 85% of this dinosaur is preserved in immaculate condition and can now be seen on display in Chicago's Field Museum of Natural History. It was determined that Sue reached her full size at the age 19 and died nine years later at the age of 28. Not only is she one of the largest and most complete of all Tyrannosaurus specimens, she is also the most long-lived. Tyrannosaurus rex specimens continue to be unearthed to this day, with paleontologists such as Jack Horner having organized expeditions specifically in search of this magnificent animal. These fossils range from having lived 68 to 66 million years ago, and from this scientists have even managed to estimate the rough number of Tyrannosaurus rex individuals that were alive on Earth throughout their entire existence. Given the lifespan, breeding habits, and time spent extant on Earth, it is thought that this dinosaur survived for roughly 127,000 generations. Over this time, it is thought that about two and a half billion individual dinosaurs managed to live their lives. As is the case with many dinosaurs discovered many years ago, our depictions and reconstructions of Tyrannosaurus rex have changed dramatically over the years, from its initial discovery to now. When the dinosaur was first discovered, scientific reconstructions of what the animal may have looked like in life were familiar, yet wildly out of proportion. 
the dinosaur was often shown to be using its tail as a third limb of sorts, a drooping structure that would drag along the ground, giving the creature a posture not too dissimilar to a modern kangaroo. Its body was often propped upright, its legs were short and pillar-like, and the head was much smaller and blunter than we know it to be. Moreover, it was often depicted as slow and sluggish, a dim-witted bipedal lizard that would skulk its way through swamps and jungles. A differing view began to emerge from the 1960s to the 1980s, with what has now become known as the Dinosaur Renaissance, led by paleontologist John Ostrom. Ostrom was the first paleontologist to challenge the idea that all dinosaurs were slow and sluggish, starting with his 1969 reconstruction of a dromaeosaurid dinosaur Deinonychus, a relative of Velociraptor. To the shock of the public and scientific community, Ostrom had presented the world with a dinosaur similar to the raptor seen in the original Jurassic Park movie and it was this contemporary science that actually ended up influencing the look of dinosaurs in the film series as a whole. Deinonychus, in Ostrom's drawings, is shown to be a lithe, slender hunter, with muscular legs held close to its body as it took long, leaping strides to chase after its prey. Its tail, more importantly, was held clear off the ground, and the dinosaur bore an overall horizontal posture as it gracefully darted across its homeland. It wasn't long before Tyrannosaurus rex got the same treatment, and before too long the days of picturing this huge predator as a meat-eating kangaroo were long behind us. Similar to the dromaeosaur from Ostrom's drawing, Tyrannosaurus was now a fast-moving apex predator with a larger, heavier head, outstretched tail, and muscular hind limbs. Something was still off, though. Typically, these dinosaurs were what paleontologists refer to as shrink-wrapped. They were reconstructed bearing in mind the skeleton alone, with little consideration for the fat, muscle, or integuments that would have adorned the animal's body in life. Soon enough, however, this too was corrected. Starting from around the 2000s and 2010s, we start to see an image of Tyrannosaurus that is synonymous with the representations of it in popular paleomedia. Paleo artists began to add more weight to their Tyrannosauruses, with greater consideration taken when reconstructing the torso in particular. Gone were the skinny, slender forms of the Tyrannosaurus of yesteryear, in favor of a more plump, muscular predator. Some reconstructions toyed with the idea of Tyrannosaurus, off the back of discoveries from China and Europe, having been coated in a layer of feathers. But the general consensus in 2023 is that Tyrannosaurus did not have them. Still, Looking at the contrast between the believable, living, breathing animal we have in reconstructions today versus the monster-like being depicted in the early 1900s, it is impressive to see the evolution of how we understand dinosaurs. There is not a shred of doubt that Tyrannosaurus has had the most cultural impact of any dinosaur as of yet discovered by science. Paleontologist Bob Bakker has even described the animal in the past as the most popular dinosaur among people of all ages, all cultures, and all nationalities. It is by far the most famous of all the dinosaurs and can be seen across popular media in just about anything that concerns dinosaurs or prehistoric life. Perhaps the most prime example is Tyrannosaurus's claim to fame in the film industry, being the literal logo of Jurassic Park and Jurassic World themselves. The dinosaur plays a starring part in the plots of each of these films, 
and this has only served to make the animal more beloved by the general public, even if the depictions of it were slightly out of date in the more recent films. Tyrannosaurus has starred in the film remake of Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World, chosen over the Allosaurus used in the book for dramatic effect. The dinosaur and its likeness have enjoyed appearances in King Kong, both the original and subsequent remakes, famously seen losing fights to the eponymous giant gorilla in the jungles of Skull Island. Tyrannosaurus was even used as inspiration for the design of the ultimate movie monster, Godzilla. The creature is also a staple of animation motion pictures, including Fantasia, Dinosaur, The Good Dinosaur, and Ice Age 3 Dawn of Dinosaurs. In terms of television appearances, Tyrannosaurus has been at the forefront of some of the best dinosaur documentaries ever made. The final episode of the six-part Walking with Dinosaurs featured Tyrannosaurus as one of the main focuses of the plot, with more recent examples found in both series of Prehistoric Planet showing Tyrannosaurus raising its young on the coastlines of ancient North America. It's difficult to find a medium of entertainment that hasn't featured Tyrannosaurus in some way. It remains one of the most popular models of children's dinosaur toys, it has been the basis of several video games, and is one of the most beloved exhibits in museums the world over, and there is very little chance of this changing anytime soon. Tyrannosaurus was a particularly widespread theropod across its range in what is now North America, ranging from Canada to New Mexico. At the time, Tyrannosaurus's range covered a vast island continent known as Laramidia, which was met with the Pacific Ocean on its west coast and the famous Western Interior Seaway on its east coast. The dinosaur's habitat preferences ranged from wooded areas to open floodplains, subtropical forests, coastlines, and semi-arid areas. The fossil formation that has become synonymous with the Tyrannosaurus rex is the Hell Creek Formation, which covers parts of Montana and Wyoming. The climate of the time was warm and humid, which permitted the growth of many species of angiosperm, some of the first flowering plants. Monkey puzzle trees and huge redwoods could be found across the forested regions, thriving in the subtropical climates. Famously, Hell Creek was known to harbor several other examples of the most famous dinosaurs ever to live. These came in the form of the abundant Triceratops, a dinosaur that was likely a key prey item for Tyrannosaurus. Fights between the two species are documented in the fossil record, and not all of them fell in the predator's favor. The horns of Triceratops were more than capable of inflicting potentially grievous wounds on the thighs and flanks of the theropod, who could have easily succumbed to the injuries. Perhaps more dangerous was Ankylosaurus, one of the most heavily armored animals ever to live. The heavy, blunt, club-like structure at the end of this herbivore's tail could have swiftly broken leg bones, which could have meant a death sentence for an unprepared Tyrannosaurus. Other ceratopsians present in Tyrannosaurus's range included Leptoceratops and Taurosaurus, while the Ankylosaur Denversaurus would also have been a frequent site for the huge theropod. Hadrosaurs, another key prey item of Tyrannosaurus, existed in large groups, possibly herds, throughout Laramidia at this time. Edmontosaurus and Thescalosaurus, both of which vary greatly in size, to name a few. 
Another particularly famous dinosaur found in Hell Creek alongside the T-Rex was Pachycephalosaurus, a bipedal ornithischian with a tough skull dome, which may have been used as a display tool to fight with rivals. Other theropods across the regions inhabited by Tyrannosaurus rex included the largest dromaeosaur of all, Dakota raptor, as well as the Ornithomimus, Struthiomimus, and Ornithomimus. The strange scenic Nathid dinosaur Anzu is also known in the northern territories of Tyrannosaurus's range. To the south thrived huge populations of the massive sauropod Alamosaurus, a 30-meter-long, 80-ton colossus, the young of which may have made possible prey atoms for Tyrannosaurus. Soaring high above the landscape was the largest pterosaur ever to live, Quetzalcoatlus, a true giant of the skies. There may even have been instances, as portrayed in the documentary Prehistoric Planet, where Quetzalcoatlus may have competed sometimes even outcompeted Tyrannosaurus for food. Famously, Tyrannosaurus is known to have been one of the very last dinosaurs alive on planet Earth. 66 million years ago, at the end of the Cretaceous period, one of the biggest extinction events the world has ever seen plummeted the Mesozoic world into chaos. In literally one of the most catastrophic disasters the planet has ever bore witness to, a colossal meteor, the Chicxulub meteor, came crashing down into the Gulf of Mexico, marking the end of the dinosaurs. The mighty reign of Tyrannosaurus was over. We've covered the Chicxulub extinction event on this channel in the past, but it's important to realize just how catastrophic this was for the dinosaurs. Millions and millions of years of evolutionary diversity were lost over a period of several thousand years that followed the impact. It's incredible to think that some Tyrannosauruses may have even looked up into the night sky to witness the flaming ball of rock hurtling towards the planet. Whether or not they knew just how much doom it would spell for them is unknown, but there was nothing they could have done. While the birds still live on today as remnants of the dinosaurs, non-avian dinosaurs were completely obliterated in the disaster. This paved the way for the mammals to rise, radiating into a number of different species, forms, and families many of which can be seen in the modern day. Tyrannosaurus rex sits within the family Tyrannosauridae, a family that groups together all of the dinosaur's most immediate relatives. The Tyrannosaurids in general were all large theropod carnivores, and the family is named after its most famous member. They were restricted to North America and Asia, and all of them lived towards the end of the Cretaceous. The family itself was split off into two subfamilies, Albertosaurinae, which contain the genera Gorgosaurus and Albertosaurus, and the subfamily Tyrannosaurinae which contained Tyrannosaurus and a cast of other related dinosaurs. The most closely related of these Tyrannosaurids is Tarbosaurus, a dinosaur which inhabited the deserts and scrublands of Central and East Asia in the late Cretaceous. It was an apex predator of ancient Mongolia and China and featured a unique locking mechanism in its jaw, which helped it grip and injure its prey. Outside of this, the next most closely related dinosaur to the T-Rex is Zhuchang Tyrannus, a dinosaur from China that lived slightly earlier in the Campanian stage of the late Cretaceous. Elsewhere lived a series of other famous faces, 
Daspletosaurus from Alberta, Nanooksaurus, a polar dinosaur from northern Alaska, and Lythronax from Utah. Almost everywhere they lived, Tyrannosaurids were the biggest and most dangerous predators in their ecosystems, with few to no natural predators. It is hard to put into words just how impactful Tyrannosaurus rex has been on the world of paleontology over the years. From its humble beginnings as a series of 34 bones uncovered from the rocks of Hell Creek, to the place of paleontological superstardom it thrives in today, this is a dinosaur with a long and dramatic history. It is rare for extinct animals to be quite as revered and respected as this one, but surely there isn't a soul alive today who would find it hard to explain why. With its awesome jaws, immense size, and wonder and mystery surrounding its existence, this will be a dinosaur that thrives in the hearts and minds of people the world over long into the future. <laughs>